Hello, in this Mashbyte, we're taking a look at coordinates and how you can use them with to code. The first time that they crop up is in year four, the coding unit lesson three. And within here, um, you, you first approach them on this slide here, um, which just sort of raises the idea that the car here is on a blue grid of coordinates and those coordinates appear here in the car's attributes or properties. It then invites you to go into Free Code Gibbon and explore that a little bit with the children. So let's go ahead and take a look at the kind of thing you could do here. So we'll open up Free Code Gibbon. And then once in here, we just need to go into design mode. And in once you're in design mode, you can just click the little slider down here at the bottom and it will reveal the grid. The grid is always there. It's just whether or not you're displaying it or not um, that this that this switch toggles. So I'm just going to drag an apple onto this grid here. And what you'll see now is in the in attributes or properties that that object has, you can see an X and a Y coordinate here. And yes, those X and Y coordinates can have decimals. As you can see, it's 3.92, 5.82 for the Y. Now, what you can do is say to the children, OK, so the apple is here and its X coordinate is three point something. What do you think will happen to the coordinate if I move it over here? And hopefully the children will get the idea that it will increase. Then you can drag it over there, drop it there. And yes, it's gone up to 16 point something. So where would we have to put the apple for it to be zero? Yes, on the line, on the um, on the axis to the left here. It can, if you push it to the left, go to negative numbers, as you can see. Um, but this is the zero line going up and down the left hand side of the screen. Y coordinates, a little bit trickier um, because they, the Y coordinate, the zero is up at the top here. So on this grid, zero, zero is in the top left hand corner, right up there at the top not in the bottom left hand corner as the children could well be familiar with from coordinate systems in lessons. It's a historic thing due to cathode ray tubes and the scanning electron beams that used to be in them and how it all came from that in history. Anyway, so you know what coordinates are now and you can see that anything that I drag onto this screen here, any object has got, got coordinates, whether it's a button um, or a dog or an apple and so on. So let's take a look at what comes next. In that year four lesson, you, the children are asked to do guard the castle, which is the gibbon activity here. It's different to guard the castle that they may have done earlier on in chimp, because in this case, the knight, when we get him to move right, is going to walk off the screen. He's going to go home early, which isn't very good, um, but we're not going to control, make him turn around by colliding with a tree or a pillar. In this case, what we have to do is use an X coordinate. And to do that, we need to have something that regularly checks the knight's X position. So we've got a, knight, a timer which every, we need to click that box there, every one second is going to check if the knight, now when I pick up knight here and drag it into the box, I've only got two options, X or Y. So I'm going to select X. And now it's saying if the knight's x, that's its x coordinate, equals something then. Now reading the question again, we need to check if it's greater than 15. So I'm just going to pop a 15 into that box there. Then we want to make something happen. So let's get this knight object here and drag it into the nest of the if there. And we'll say go left. So checking that if the knight's x is greater than 15, then the command knight go left is nested inside the if, so it will only happen if that condition is true. Let's press run and the knight should turn around now when he gets to an x of 15 and make his way back. Great. The rest of the activity here is similar to that um, in that the next part of the challenge is if the knight's x is less than 5, then we want the knight to turn around and go right so he doesn't walk off the screen at the other side. Now, I've seen plenty of children get their code looking like this and expect it to work, and they will click run. The knight's going to get to X is 15, turn around, and then walk off the screen to this side because it's never checking if the knight's X is less than 5. And what we have to do is to make sure that this if check here is inside the nest of the timer. 
so that that check too will be carried out every one second and then it will work absolutely fine as we'd expect. You can see I've got the green arrow here, the green button here to go on to the next challenge and the night will turn around. Great. Now the next activity where you'll see coordinates come up in the scheme of work, I believe is when you do the football game in year five or six. And this is part of um, learning about functions. And what we're doing here is we're setting up a function to reset the ball. Because what we've got here is this game where we flick the ball um, and we're gonna have a goal here later on. If the ball hits the wall around the edge, if the ball hits the goal, if the ball hits the goalie, we want to bring the ball back to this starting position here, the penalty spot, if you like. And that's a coordinate that we're going to do that with. So within here, to make the ball move to a coordinate, what we're just going to do is inside this function, which I'm going to call reset here, um, we will, if I can spell it right, there we go. We are going to say that we want the football, first of all, to stop moving. So we're going to set its speed to zero. Then we're going to, as the next part of this set of instructions, we're going to set its X coordinate to three and its Y coordinate to eight. And then what happens is whenever this function reset is called, because a function is just a way of storing a set of instructions so that whenever we want to use them in the future, I'm just going to say call reset and I can do that same call reset if it hits the goal, if it hits the goalie, if it hits the post, whatever, without having to type these instructions out again. But you can see here what's going to happen is when we do the reset, it stops the ball moving and puts it back to this X is three, Y is eight coordinate. I'll just show you. So if I kick the ball here, if I can, I'm going to get that to move. And if it hits the wall now, which I hope it will, it will immediately be reset to those coordinates because that's been carried out. So that's how you can use coordinates to set the value of or set the position of a shape. So let's stop that. Um, another thing that that you might be interested in seeing that you can do with this is we've got a little game here where we've got a diver who's on this screen here. We've got a diver, we've got a treasure chest down here. And the idea that we're developing in this game is that the diver is going to be moving around the screen using my arrow keys. And when he collects the treasure chest and the treasure chest will move somewhere else on the screen to a random position for him to go and collect another treasure chest. So if I click run now, you'll sort of get the idea. So I can move the, the diver around like this. And what I want to happen is when I touch that treasure chest, when the diver touches the treasure chest, the treasure chest disappears somewhere else on the screen. So looking at the code here, what we need to happen is um, we need to have this block here. When the diver collides with the treasure chest, what we want to do is to move the treasure chest. So we're going to say treasure chest. And then from its proper attributes here, we're going to select the X. And I'm going to set this to a random number. So I'm not going to type a number in here. Let's just click on random. And we'll have this, say, from somewhere, let's say 1 to 20. And then I'm going to do the same kind of thing, but for the Y coordinate. Um, and we'll have a random number here from 1 to 20. I think the, I think the X coordinate could perhaps be more than 20 because it's um, the screen is longer than it is wide. So I'm going to make that 1 to 25. Um, so, for, so let's just check this. So now, whenever the diver collides with the treasure chest, the treasure chest's coordinates are going to change to those random numbers. Um, I'm not doing anything with scores yet, but let's just see it hopefully move. Ah, okay, yep, so it's moved over here. Just test that again. Is it going to move to another random coordinate now? Yes, it's down there in the bottom corner. Can I take a shortcut and come in that way? Yes. Great, so that's working really well now. Now, to further develop this game, I'd probably be looking at doing something like um, adding in a shark for the diver to escape and adding in scores as well. But an interesting thing I thought I could do which you, you might like to see is rather than just setting the X and Y coordinate to something, we can kind of get the information from the X and Y coordinate and use it to set something else. So what I've got here on my screen is I've got this boy at the top here and I want the boy to, to move along the surface of the water here to show the position of the diver. 
beneath. And all I'm going to do here is down in this bottom timer block here, every quarter of a second, which I can access just by clicking on the blocks here for the quarter seconds, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say that the boy's x coordinate is going to be set to. Now I want to read what the diver's x coordinate is. So I'm going to say diver x, and that's it. So what we're saying here is the boy's x coordinate is going to be set to whatever the diver's x coordinate is every quarter of a second. And now, as you'll see, when I when the diver's swimming anywhere, the boy is moving around at the top. It's a little bit of a lag because um, it's that quarter of a second. But what we're doing there is we're reading and writing that x coordinate between objects every quarter second, which is another way of using the x coordinates. And lastly, I just wanted to show you this, which came up um, in, I think this was one of the year five and six activities. Um, we were doing the game Splatty, Splatty Bug, and we were um, changing this. And what we have are these bananas here, which are moving around on the screen. And ordinarily, you might just want um, to splat, to click one of the bananas and it will disappear and you'll get a point for it. But um, what the children, what one of the children in my class wanted to do was they wanted to have a splat on there as well. And so what we did was we drew a splat shape here and we hid it initially. Now, what we're going to do in the code to make this work is when somebody splats a banana, um, what we're going to do is so when any of the food is clicked, that banana is, is hidden. We're then going to add one onto the score and play a splatting sound. But then here's the clever bit. What we do is we move the green splat X coordinate to the same as the clicked food and we move the Y coordinate to the clicked food. So it moves the splat to wherever we've just splatted a banana. And then the next command is to show it and then after one quarter of a second to hide it. I think it's really quite effective. As you can see here, so it, it's doing that and we're, it's the same splat that we're moving around on the screen here. Um, and that's just another application. One of the children in, that I was working with, they came up with that idea themselves. And it was great to see children using the blocks and the commands that they've learned in to code in such a creative way. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps you with some of the understanding of what the coordinate system is, how it's on that hidden blue grid, but it's always there and how you can read coordinates to make things happen and how you can also set coordinates to match other things happening as well. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you found it useful. Goodbye.